Hi there, great, you have made it to the second part and in the previous part I told you guys to try to make a level and use the settings that we've created for the player to adjust it to your liking. And this is what I came up with. Now I'm gonna go to the project where we left off and we'll start creating some of the things from there. If you want to download this project, I did make it available on Patreon and there's a link in the description. So here is where we have a left off in the previous video and I increased the speed of the tractor to 10. That seems to work better for the scale that I have the game at. And also you might have noticed when you're playing the game that if you switch from left to right, you can see that the tractor is like snapping. And that is actually one of the options that we have. So you can go to project settings under input manager for the horizontal axis, which is the axis that we're using. There is an option for snap. If we put the mouse over snap, it says if we have input in the opposite direction of current, do we jump to neutral and continue from there? By default, the snap is on. So whenever we're going to the right, if we click left, it snaps to the zero point and then smoothly goes to the left. So if you disable the snap option, it will make the tractor transition smoother between those two points. If you have any interesting suggestions or anything interesting that you have done with the project, please write that in the comments below the video. But in this part, I'm gonna show how you can randomly generate objects for your level so that you have a nice starting point which is what I did for the test that I did here. So let's start with that. For my object, I'm gonna use one of these trees from the nature kit that Kenny has. I have downloaded it. So I'll find a tree, it's gonna be in the FBX format and add that to my scene. Just like we did for the tractor, I'll expand this object and select these two materials. Click Control D to duplicate those materials out and now I will go and use the materials that I've just duplicated as the materials for the import. Click apply and now I can drop my tree pine to the FBX folder and the materials can go into the materials folder. Now we can add this tree to our scene and see how it looks. So the tree is pretty small right now and it's hidden behind the tractor. So let's scale it. We do have an option for enable proportional scaling. So I'll use that because I want to scale it proportionally. And that makes it easier because I can click on any of these axes and drag and scale it that way. So that is our tree. And the colors look a little bit washed out. So let's go and change it to something more greener, something like that. And we can move the object to the side to see how our word bark looks and change the color of that as well. So I'll make it a little bit browner. That's the colors I'm gonna use, but you can use any object you want for the obstacles and change the colors as you like as well. Position this back at zero. Now I want to create a prefab from this object. And first I will create an empty parent for it. We'll call it tree pine. And to create a prefab, we can just drop it into our assets folder and that saves all the configuration that we have for this object and now if we add these prefab to our scene then we're using the same exact settings so let's remove the tree from here and i will create another folder with prefabs and put the tree pine inside there okay so our tree is ready now let's create a script that's going to randomly place the trees in our scene. So I'm going to create an empty object. I'll call it trees. And in here, we'll create a new script. Let's call it generator. Create. I'll move the script that just was created into our scripts folder. And now we can go and edit the script. So in here, I'll create a serialized field for my prefab. The prefab is going to be a type of game object and we'll just call it a prefab. Okay, so that's gonna be our option. And now in start, we're gonna create some for loops. And let's take a look how we're gonna generate the objects. We want to generate in the Z direction and the X direction. 
that's the 2D plane that we're going to use to place the trees. So there's different ways we can generate. The way I'm going to generate right now, select a random Z position where I want to place a tree and then select the random X position. So inside a for loop, I'm going to create a float. This is going to be our Z axis. And the starting point, I want to start creating the trees not at the zero point, but a little bit in front of the tractor. So let's start at Z10. But later on, we can change that. So let's set Z to 10. Then we can set how far we want to place those trees. So let's start by setting it to 300 units. And now we want to specify by how much we want to increment the Z. So instead of incrementing by one, I will use the plus equals, which will give me the option of incrementing by a random number. And I'll use a random range instead of just a random number. That way I can specify what's the minimum distance that the next tree is going to be spaced out. So let's start with something like six. And I do want to generate floats. So let's do that. And for the maximum, let's say 10 units. So that's going to be our range. And now we can instantiate the tree at that Z axis. To create that tree, we can call the instantiate method. And in here, we can pass a prefab for the object that we're trying to instantiate. Now the instantiate returns in game object. Let's save that as a variable, call it tree. So now we have access to tree. We can perform our other things with the tree here if we need that. Some of the things that I need to do to this tree is set the parent to be the trees game object, and we can do it inside here. So let's pass transform of this game object that holds the generator as the parent. In here, we also have options for setting the position and rotation, but I'll do that separately here. So for tree, Let's get our transform and for position, we'll create a new position vector. The first value is X and I already said that I want to also create a random range for this as well. So let's do random range. And if we go back to our scene, our current ground range is from five to negative five. And if I drop a tree here, I don't want to move past this point, I guess. So a 4.5 is the maximum distance that we want to place that tree. Otherwise, the trunk is going to be off the ground. So let's go and do that here. So random range. Let's start from negative 4.5. It's a float to 4.5 float. That's going to be our X for the Y. We're going to set it to zero. We're not changing that. And for the Z, we're going to use the value that we've created in the for loop. Add the semicolon at the end, save it, and we can actually test it out and see how that looks. So select our trees game object, and we need to connect the prefab here. We can click on this icon right here and go to our assets and find the tree that we're looking. So tree pine is the prefab that we want to use. And now we can click play and see what type of level we're going to generate. So there we go. We have random level generated with these trees. So they're pretty good spaced out. I can avoid them. So you can use this kind of technique to create your random levels. Or if you want, you can actually use this as the starting point for your level. So how you can do that is pause this game. And then you can go select these trees that were generated, copy them, and unpause the game. And now you can paste the trees back into the scene. And you have that level created for you. And you can modify it if you want to add some other stuff. But I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to remove those trees. One thing that you can see that when we get closer to the end, our ground ends. And we can increase the z-axis and move that ground further away for the length of our level. And that can work if you have a limited distance for your level. Now, if you're going to create an endless level, then you want that ground to be following the player. If we add the ground inside of the player, it's going to be following the player in the X direction and in the Z direction, which is not what we're looking for. So if you want the ground to follow the player, 
with this kind of setup, we'll need to make a small script that's going to do that for us. But for now, I'm going to leave that and I want to go back to my generation script. So we can add some more randomness into our trays. Currently, we're not rotating and we're not scaling them. So if we add those two randomizations to the trees, it will make the trees look more unique. So let's go ahead and add that to our script. But before we start that, I'm going to get rid of some of those magic numbers that we have. So those are the variables for that. And now let's create a randomization for scale. So tree transform a local scale equals and in here, instead of creating a new vector, what I'm going to do is uh, select vector three and use the one option, which is going to be a vector three with a value one, one, one. And we can multiply that by the random range that we want for the scale. I'm going to create two variables for that as well. For minimum, I'm going to use 0.8 float. And for maximum, let's set it to 1.1. Get the variables in here. So that's going to be our scale. And let's go ahead and do the rotation as well. Transform rotation equals for this. We're going to have to use quaternion euler and create a new vector three here because we only want to rotate it on the Y axis pass zero for the X axis. And for the Y axis, we're going to create a random range again. And let's create a variable for the rotation range, the range of 180. And for our minimum, we're going to use negative Y rotation. And for maximum, we're just going to use Y rotation. Uh, we can pass the zero for the Z or leave it out. It will still accept that. But let's actually explicitly write zero for the Z angle. Now we can save this. If you want, you can expose any of these settings inside the inspector by adding serialized field. I'm going to do that for the Z endpoint. Make that a serialized field. And let's actually do it for the Z start point as well. The other ones I'm not going to expose just yet. So save those changes. Let's go to our game. Here's our values here. Let's actually increase this to 400 and test out the game. So here is our generated level. And you can see that the rotation of the trees is a random and also the scale is also random. So you can play around more with the generation and see what you come up with. And we'll see you in the next part.